Hey guys, this is the AC Service Tech Channel. Today what we're looking at is how to uh, figure out the superheat needed to charge for a air conditioner, all right, so an outdoor condenser or a heat pump in AC mode. The very first thing we're going to need to do after checking what refrigerant it is, we're going to need to determine if the unit, if the evaporator coil uh, has a TXV, okay, or if it has a piston um, slash orifice, all right, so this is a this is a little orifice. They come in different sizes. All right, a piston or an orifice are the same thing. Okay, um, but if you do not have a TXV, uh, then you know you have a piston. All right, so you can need you need to leave a look at the rating plate on the evaporator coil. But the the best way to tell is just to make sure maybe open the face up to that evaporator coil just to verify that there is no TXV before using the superheat charging method. Okay, so first. First thing we need to do is is get a wet bulb reading. Okay, so this particular uh, tool right here is called a digital psychrometer. All right, and you're gonna turn that on and change it to wet bulb. All right, presently right now I think it says 62 roughly. Okay, you're gonna put that near the return of the indoor unit. Okay, um, so whether that's at the largest return grill, okay, or right near the unit. At the return, as long as the, um, as long as you're in the return dock work or, or something very close to return dock work, obviously not in the attic. Um, so I usually put this right near the largest return wheel, and I like to have a place to set it uh, because your wet bulb is going to change as you charge the unit. Okay, so that has to do with the humidity in the house, and as you lower the humidity due to the air conditioning system running, even if it's only 5, 10, 15 minutes, your wet bulb is going to lower. So we're just looking for our initial superheat reading, and then you're going to have to check it continually as you charge the unit. Presently, it's roughly right around 63, we'll say. Okay, it says 63. All right, now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go out to the outdoor unit and check the uh, outdoor temperature. All right, you're going to need to get a uh, charging chart for superheat which you can find online or are in some of the older uh, condensing uh, shrouds okay but uh, I would suggest you carry what long carry one with you um, whether that's a digital one or just a paper forms fine all right so now we're gonna go out to the outdoor condenser all right so now we're at the outdoor unit all right so we got our temp probe here and we're gonna check what temperature it is now hot air is gonna end up be end up blowing out of the top of this unit. So the hot air is going to be blowing this way. So we want to take our temperature reading down low. All right. Uh, down low and out of the sun. Okay. So we're at about, say, 67. Yeah, but we'll say about 67. All right. So you're going to take your temp probe, and you're not going to go too close to the fins. You know, stay away from the fins. All right. And just realize that the air is always sucking inward. Okay. And then blowing up out of the top of the unit. So you want to get a true reading in the shape. All right, so 67. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at our uh, superheat charging chart. All right, so we go over to this superheat charging table. And since we said we had an outdoor temperature of 67, okay, you can go 65 or 70 degrees for your outdoor temperature. All right, this superheat uh, charging table is found on the inside cover uh, of the outdoor condenser. All right. You can find these uh, superheat charging tables for wet bulb and outside temperature to find your needed superheat that you need to charge these to. You can find them online and sometimes in the old um, covers all right, of the outdoor condensers. Um, I'm sure you can also get apps for them as well, um, but you know, a paper version would be fine. All right, so uh, 65 degrees and 70 degrees. Let's just take 65 across, okay? We said we had um, 63 for the wet bulb. All right, so we're going to get take 65 across, okay, and we're going to take 62 up. All right, 62 degree wet bulb. So we have 21 degrees of superheat is what we need to charge the system to. All right. So now let's take a look at 70 degrees for the outdoor temp. We bring that across, and we line that up with 64. Okay, and we get 21 again. If these numbers were off, we would go ahead and take the average of this number and this number, and that's what we would charge it to. 
remember that you have to continually check uh, the superheat uh, as you reduce the wet bulb temperature inside the house. As the unit's running, say the unit runs for 10 minutes or so, your wet bulb inside the house is going to lower, okay? And then you have to check for the needed superheat again. Maybe it reduces to 19, all right? So you have to continually check that every 10 or 15 minutes uh, of running time, or maybe a little bit even, maybe a little bit more yet. Um, but uh, you do want to be aware that your your required superheat that you need to charge the system to on systems that have pistons, orifices, and uh, capillary tubes does change as you are charging the unit. All right. So that's that. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and see you next time at AC Service Tech.